Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have just received the champion spotlights well about an hour ago but uh, I finished work and got home as quickly as I could so I'm making this video as early as I possibly can having introduced myself with Strife's mechanics and actually have spent some time considering uh, and going over them. Right, uh, first thing, I'm going to be making two videos about Strife. Number one is uh, because obviously I do want to discuss his abilities and everything that he will be great at because he does look like a very, very promising mutant character and a very worthy addition to the game with a lot of upsides and many things that I do like about him. Now, another thing and specifically why I'm going to be making second video is because everybody is immediately drawing comparisons to how Strife is going to be similar or mutant Aegon, which I do not believe will be the case because having a ramp up and having great damage is awesome, but there are several key things that Aegon, well, just smashes Strife at and for, and I will do my best to highlight the character differences and how it will have an impact in the game and where one will be better than another, I believe. Either way, let's just jump to it, right? So Strife, I'm not going to go and read all of his abilities. Main key things is that uh, he will have high damage potential. He will be able to go invisible and glance hits, which uh, obviously will be very annoying for him as a defender. There are, in fact, several abilities that will kind of make him really annoying on defense as well. So I do fully expect... Uh, to see this character on tier 1 lines for defense netting and some kills because he will make people miss attacks, he will glance them and uh, yeah, it's just gonna be bad time overall in some cases but we'll see what happens with that when we actually get to play against the character and uh, there are obviously very cool things as I mentioned before like uh, he's gonna be able to block unblockable attacks which he's able to achieve consistently and reliably which is great and uh, all unblockable attacks also means that he could potentially be a very great counter to Nick Fury and in addition to that it also means that he can potentially be used in Abyss past the hit damage cap because if opponents are unstoppable and unblockable and he has ability to stun the unstoppable opponents yeah it, it could lead to some interesting things and uh, yeah so, weakness is power lock, power, power drain, as he cannot build his charges, which are extremely important. Then we have opponent's power gain, vigilance, anti-mess, and uh, all of the rest of the stuff is going to become apparent quite soon. Now, when we can talk about his abilities, first and foremost, we cannot overlook the psionic blast. And it's one of the main reasons why I actually have quite a lot of hope on Promise for Strife as a champion. Because psionic blasts occur in medium heavy attacks and special two attacks. These deal energy damage instead of physical, cannot be evaded. And in addition to all of that, reduce the potency of incoming passive direct damage by 100%. So these are basically the same thing that Falcon does uh, when he's locked up, not, not Falcon, the same thing that Daredevil does if he's awakened in his uh, second mode. It's kind of like Omega Red tentacle hits basically. And also the fact that you can immediately bypass a wade gives him a ton of immediate utility and will kind of make him practical in a lot of situations flat out. In fact, the ability to bypass Evade is one of the main reasons why I like Night Rusher so much, because he can just shut down Evade from the very first hit in the fight. There's no build-up, no abilities needed. You just attack the opponent and they can't Evade from the very start of the fight. It's super useful, super underrated, and the fact that this will also let you bypass incoming damage is great. I do fully expect this actually to be one of the cornerstones of day-to-day -day usability of Strife because having 100 persistent charges and being able to ramp him up in a long quest is only good so long as you can use him for pretty much every fight in the quest and quite often ramp up champions do suffer from the fact that you just don't have 5 or 3 or 6 fights to ramp them up. But this actually gives him a grounded, very solid base amount of utility, which alone is enough combined with the solid damage output for him to be a valuable addition to the roster. So this is a key aspect of why Strife is going to be a good champion. All the other abilities put aside, this here alone makes me want to have the character. 
Right, now we're going to talk about his telepathic charges. He can get up to 20 of these that are going to be, let's say, quote-unquote active, and he can store up to 100 uh, of these as persistent charges, which he will not be able to use as a currency, like these 20 active ones, but they will still give the attack increases and such. So, telepathic charges are unaffected by ability accuracy reduction, but cannot be gained while suffering from power lock, burn, or drain. Fair enough. Uh, but that is also notable and very important to keep in mind. Okay, so all attacks gain 69 attack per telepathic charge. In total, you get a lot of attack. You get close to, what, uh, a bit over 8,000 attack, which is a huge, huge amount for a 5-star. And that's at max ramp up because we can see that a 5-star, five 565 base attack is going to be like 2,300. So it will effectively be like uh, entering a fight with like 300% fury active. It's a crazy amount of attack, which obviously inevitably leads you to think that he's going to have super high damage output, which he likely will because the developer's notes quite frequently reference high damage output, Aegon, Star-Lord, and Abyss. So he's definitely kind of designed for that type of piece of content. Right, most importantly, how do you gain these charges? 55% chance to gain one telepathic charge when landing a heavy attack, chance increased by flat 15% for each full bar of power, basically three bars of power, 100% chance to gain these charges. Where gain one telepathic charge when struck by a critical hit. This is what is going to make him very annoying on defense. Because uh, when you get struck at five plus telepathic charges, you consume them and you cause the attack to glance and you suffer 100% offensive ability accuracy. And if he's awakened, you also go invisible and effectively your next attack will miss. And that's going to be crazy on defense. Imagine something in between Havoc and Guillotine 2099, where when you happen to crit against the guy, he gains these charges, and instead of detonating, you just get beat in the face because you have missed an attack. So it's going to be quite annoying and tricky to play around, which obviously will lead you to use champions that power lock, burn, or drain, or champions that bypass miss, or how this psychic shielding, because then he cannot go invisible, I believe. Also, gain plus one telepathic charge each time strife or his opponent misses. Uh, so this will have more offensive use because you will basically be using kind of like a ghost mechanic where you miss opponent's attack and then land your heavy attack or start your combo of your own after level one. So this will help you gain more charges quicker. And uh, I just read this out about glancing. Also... Possibly most importantly, striking an opponent or into their block while they are unstoppable consumes two telepathic charges to remove the effect and inflict passive stun for 1.2 seconds, cool down 8 seconds. It's going to be interesting to see whether this works on passives or not, because we do have champions like Captain America Infinity War who only remove unstoppables from active buffs, but then we have champions who slow or who generally work against unstoppable, and then passive isn't an issue. If passive isn't an issue, this could be key mechanic in Abyss of Legends. So that kind of remains to be seen. Let's move on. Fourth light attack, consume one telepathic charge to in inflict passive concussion for 12 seconds. And whilst opponent suffering from concussion, uh, you can block unblockable attacks. The concussion is relatively weak, but you can stack it and that will result in some significant ability accuracy reduction, which I don't think is going to be the main use of it. The main use of it will likely be situational ability to block unblockable attacks when you need that against, you guessed it, unblockable champions or Nick Fury or, again, in Abyss, possibly. So if all adds up together well, he could potentially be one of the craziest Abyss destroyers. Right. Heavy attacks. Deal a burst of 581 energy damage plus 500% potency if invisible. So if you're invisible, you're going to be dealing a lot of damage on your heavy attack extra. And also gain plus 3 telepathic charges if invisible. That ties in with special 1 telepathic camouflage. So the second hit in his attack inflicts non-stacking passive shock, dealing meh damage. The shock is removed and reapplied on each psionic blast. So on each medium, heavy attack or level 2. That's cool. You can possibly maintain it up the entire fight. 
but I don't think it's going to be overly important. But hey, after this attack, Strife activates a telepathic cloak to go invisible for 3 seconds, giving the opponent a 100% chance to miss. This will not trigger when fighting an opponent with psychic shielding. Right. So here's going to be the key aspect and the key... Oh, the last point before I explain. If Strife lands an attack, blocks an attack, or the opponent activates special attack, his position is revealed and visibility is removed. So the way I imagine in my head playing this is uh, quite simple. You activate your level one uh, when opponent has less than one battle power. And then you immediately dash for a stand-up intercept. And no matter what happens, you go into heavy attack. You have three seconds to do that. And that will not only obviously let you possibly gain a charge if opponent misses, it will deal them burst damage from your heavy attack, give you these plus three telepathic charges, but it will also push your power bar immediately higher back up towards the level one and opponent's power bar towards his level one. Now, ideally, he has a heavy attack animation which you can spam in the corner because that's going to be the point. Get opponent in the corner, drop your level one and keep spamming your heavy attacks because each consecutive heavy attack will have a chance to give you more charges and it will make a very simplistic kind of like fight mechanic, kind of similar what She-Hulk used to have or kind of similar what Wasp has or maybe Tiger where you basically bait out opponent's level one, drop your level one and spam heavy attack till they reach one bar of power, rinse and repeat. So it could have very user-friendly, quick and engaging playstyle as well, which is something I look forward to testing if it all works out the same way. Now, Special Attack 2 is definitely the big damage daddy. The first hit and final two hits in this stack are Psionic Blast. So if they will refresh those shock debuffs, each dealing a burst of 697 dam energy damage plus 80% 80 80 potency if the opponent is shocked. So if you build up level one, level two, you're going to refresh the shock and you're going to deal more damage. Psionic Blast gain 139.44 attack rating per telepathic charge. Considering you can get up to 120 of these, it has a potential for absolutely massive damage, at least on the paper. Last thing, Special 3's uh, Your Mind, Your Playground. Gain 5 persistent telepathic charges for the, last, for the rest of the quest, but are capped at 100. So this is how you gain those charges but you don't have to throw 20 heavy attacks because it also consumes all telepathic charges, each becoming plus one additional persistent telepathic charge. So you can get to max of 20 active ones, you drop a level three and you're gonna have 25 persistent ones. And you do that using your level three. Now, persistent telepathic charges cannot be consumed to trigger abilities, but still grant an attack rating bonuses. Fair enough, if the opponent is shocked, inflict a passive concussion for 30 seconds, reducing the opponent's ability accuracy by 30%. Not too strong concussion, but remember, concussion allows you to block unblockable attacks, which is quite crazy. And the signature ability. When gaining telepathic charges from any source other than this ability, you have 20% chance to gain additional one. That bit is not important. Whenever the opponent lances a basic attack, Strap has a 40% chance to activate his special one in visibility for 3 seconds. This is crucial for defense, so he will 100% have to be duped for defense. But unfortunately, the last line, winning a fight converts 70% of telepathic charges into persistent telepathic charges, kind of will make you really want to have him duped in any other content than Everest content. So I don't think the dupe is going to be important at all for, let's say, Abyss. But I do think it's going to be extremely, extremely important for general questing. Because you quite often win the fights either being unable to get level 3 or unwilling to get level 3 because you're still like building up or whichever. So this is a key ability for casual questing. So I do think that... Uh, you will be able to gain good amount of value out of Strife, Unawakened, but for day-to-day -day use, you definitely want him awakened. It's kind of like Sentinel. You can use Sentinel Unawakened, why not? But it just takes so much longer, longer to ramp him up. And synergy bonuses, there are a couple of interesting ones, and I'm gonna explaining, uh, explain a few of them, but I don't want this video to get too long. Right, 
Once per fight after being struck by a basic attack, uh, opponent inflicted with a passive falter, which remember will make opponent miss, which will let strife gain charges. Which is cool. Also, Ebony Maw, while the opponent suffering Black Tongue, they're inflicted with 3 second falter. That's Ebony Maw, like, realistically, he needs fuck ton more than to become a usable champion. And also, unfortunately, because it's Ebony Maw, you're not ever likely to use this synergy in any serious content. Now, Bull targets with Guillotine, Tor, and Hood. Strife start the fight with enemies built to. That's cool, because you can immediately go into heavy attack. Opponent can't evade it, you're gonna gain your charges and yeah it's good time overall it's not needed by any means just handy but the fact that that synergy is with tor and tor actually gains a lot from this beauty buff from the first glance this synergy looks underwhelming and if you do not know tor's abilities you might look at it only as nah three buffs 30 percent attack increase doesn't really do much the thing is tor gains a lot more damage due to the fact that he has Fury buffs active. One of Thor's abilities increases his uh, damage, basically, per Fury buff, regardless how strong. So this will trigger that ability three times, plus you can get or or Thor's original, and you should be able to do a crap ton more damage with OG Thor. I'm very eager to test this out, because I personally do hope for quite significant damage increase. So this should be quite cool. Also, synergies with Hood and Guillotine are neat, but nothing game-breaking from the characters. Right. Clone at birth with Cable, Strive start to fight with five telepathic charges. This is going to be very good for quicker fights, quicker quests, and also makes for a solid trinity with Cable, Apocalypse, and Strife, where you enter a fight with Apocalypse, you are max charges, you finish that fight, make Strife a horseman and go and wreck some stuff. Synergy for Cable is quite uh, irrelevant, kind of. While well, the opponent suffering from degeneration, special attacks grant 50% less power. Whatever. Big Bad Dad, that's where it gets interesting. The final hit of special attack 2 pauses all shock effects of, on opponent for 4 seconds, which is nice, whatever. But if this champion is a horseman of Apocalypse, become personally unblockable as long as 20 telepathic charges are active. And uh, that is quite crazy. <laughs> that could potentially have some major, major benefits in some longer piece content. So that would be quite interesting thing. And what's more interesting, <laughs> Strife can actually make Apocalypse into a damage ramp of champion as well, because Apocalypse... Uh, Activating special attack 1 or 2 increases the potency of personal burst damage by 25%. This can stack up to 300%. So, if Apocalypse is fully synergized up, his damage output isn't like bonkers insane, but it's good. But with this, it could be quite crazy. So, uh, this is another thing that I'm very eager to test out. And how maxed out 5 star Apocalypse and how taken through the labyrinth. Now, this makes me <laughs> want to redo that run as soon as I can. And then some enemies and family synergies with whatever. So overall, there is a lot of promise in Strife. Uh, there are definite things that I like. Uh, his prestige is all right, nothing groundbreaking. Obviously, he's a mutant. But uh, part of the fact that he's mutant obviously lets him benefit from Apocalypse and he gets his horseman ability. He also lets him benefit from Professor X, which can give him even more bonkers damage. And most importantly, possibly, can uh, let him benefit from other Professor X synergies, such as he can potentially become poison resistant. So in longer piece content, you should eventually be able to activate Suicide Masteries. Because if you ramp up Professor X, and if you ramp, make him Horseman of Apocalypse, he doesn't take bleed damage, and he's going to be healing from Liquid Courage, which is insane. You get even more damage. There are a ton of good things. There are things that I'm not so keen on. Overall, I do think he's going to be a great addition. I do really look quite highly at his potential utilities. Now, obviously, there are downsides, like his reliance on heavy attacks, his reliance on special attacks, because you need to throw the special ones in order to become invisible and then land your heavies, and keep landing your heavies, and eventually access the level 3, and there are a ton of abilities who hinder that, and... I'm going to save the rest of it for the other video, 
But the main takeaway is that Skype is going to be a damage dealing champion with very solid amount of utility. And from the first look at it, it does look very, very good. I'm personally interested and I'm likely going to be trying to grind for him. Uh, that is it for now, but uh, definitely stay tuned for the second video where I'm going to have some perhaps less so kind things to say about Strife. See you guys.